Spotify. Uh, we're gonna do things a little different. We're gonna do uh, a tournament. It's gonna be an inner geekdom tournament. No, 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 no. We don't have time to do all that tournament stuff. Let, we have to get. Let, let, let me stop. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. Because I think. You know what? I, I think I think a tournament probably sounds like the better option. Uh, I think we could probably squeeze that in. Emma Fife, the inner geekdom gauntlet is coming up, and guess what? You get another helping of the Viper Squad in the head of this big snake right here. Oh, Jay. I just think that this is a person who really has never gotten over the fact that I beat him in the manager's bowl. What was Yoda's approximate age? when he passed away? Um, 900. And your winner! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's done it for the second time in the match. Emma the Golden Knight, Emma Fine! I'm Mara, I love movies. I have been begging Christian for a long time to let me finally come over and compete in the interview. Star Trek Into Dark, Mariadoc, Brandy Buck, Xandar, A Unicorn, Three, An Unexpected Journey, Kryptonite, Shmi, A Gorilla, A Justin Lin, Gotti. And your winner, by way of technical knockout! I feel like we found a new female superstar here. Well, I, I don't know if I want to call myself a superstar, but I would be willing to accept the moniker of the Brown Dwarf Star. No one knew who you were, and now they do. Because of me. This competition was only 10 competitors. Now it's 16, so you're uh, one of those lonely six that are now part of me. So I would think when someone does something nice for you, you're going to make a name for yourself. Come to thank you. I have no idea who you are. We don't know each other. Oh. Why do I need to thank you for orchestrating the opportunity for my complete success? I'm not talking orchestrating. I'm just giving you an opportunity to become a superstar. But it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna, you know, you're one of those people. I'm one of these people. You know what? Let's, you get a great win. You keep on winning, I'm gonna keep on winning. We'll see where that takes us. Himself. Jay Washington is oh, here, ladies man, and gentlemen. I'm, I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me on this. It's good to have you here, man. So, look, it's the first time to, to call a match with you two. And it's also another thing is that you are someone who has competed in the Inner Geekdom. You were in this tournament. Yes. You know how tough it is to compete under these lights. Oh, yeah. You got to study a lot for this. You can't just take it lightly like, oh, I just saw a few movies. I'm good. I know this is in third. No, you have to pay some attention to these categories, especially when it comes to Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, right. you know, their DC movies is a broad scope. So for people who've gone to the second round, especially when it's competing now, I get to it. I know. I know. <laughs> but, you know, if you've gotten this far, you've, you've done your homework in this. Right. And so, look, we've been talking about it the whole entire time. The reason that we have this thing is because of Mike the Killer Kalinowski. He's had these this 16-round tournament here, why we've been doing this. And inside of this tournament, you have seen Emma Fife, someone you know very well, oh, yeah. who has now advanced, beating you in the first round. You, you got to keep bringing her uh, up. Well, that's what happened. I mean, um, okay, and then she is going up to what some are saying the rising superstar after one match, the amazing Mara Kanopic. To watch Mara in her first match against Koi, Koi seemed like he'd never played in this league before. Right. And Mara had been here, and that scared me. And I was like, you know what? I might have a spot for her in the Viper Squad. Well, that's listen. That's the trick. <laughs> isn't it though is that coming coming in, coming into the league coming into the league and being answering questions 
is is one thing. But be, having the overall attitude, as it looked like she had played in 20 matches yeah. before. That that doesn't happen very often in this league because you're trying to figure out what it's all about. And Mara just seems to ha have it down. But she's going up against Emma Fife. Emma Fife has done it all in this league, whether it's managing, um, interviews, uh, competing. She's done it all. And I can't wait to hear from both of the competitors. And we're going to hear from them right now. So here we are, round two of the Inner Geekdom Tournament. I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, it's been a really good year for the Fife Club, quite frankly. I mean, you've got Mark Andreco, who's poised to be in a number one contender match. The Shire Wolves are out there kicking butt. They are so close to getting that team belt. And then, I, I mean, Rachel, my God, she is the future Inner Geekdom champion. There's no two ways about it. Round two of the Inner Geekdom Tournament. I know, right? One, two. Very epic. Um, Emma is so intimidating. I mean, when she's on fire, she is like Johnny freaking Storm. So, you know, it's intimidating, but I'm just here because there was nothing better on FX today. So, you know, it's going to be fun. Originally, when this whole Inner Geekdom tournament started, I was told that my next match was going to be against Keaton Markey. And then Mike Kalinowski comes in and decides that he doesn't want that to happen. And now I'm going to be playing Mara. Now, why Mike Kalinowski is getting to make all of these decisions, I have no idea. Thad, are you okay? Well, you know, the fan reaction has been so overwhelmingly positive, thank you. Um, usually I'm very popular as the butt of the joke rather than the, I guess I'm in on the joke? I don't know what the joke is. Is Kalinowski the joke? I don't know, he can be the joke, he's the joke. So I'm in on the joke now. Mara is freaking awesome. She's really, really good. So I don't know, I consider this kind of a, a, a test for myself to see how I do against a really formidable opponent. And ultimately, you know, a lady's gonna win today. So it's a win all around. Emma, today during this match, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to sit in a chair. I'm gonna answer questions to the best of my ability. Then I'm going to shake your hand, win or lose. And then one of us is going to win or lose. A lot of respect, as we knew. Which it should be. I mean, you, you can see that. But we also know Mara has a uh, spicy side to her. Yeah. You saw with her interaction with Mike. And I don't blame her. Right, I don't right, blame her. Right, I don't right. blame her. She's unique. It's unique. She, that's, what, that's the word we I, use. She's I think, unique. I think Mara is unique. When you expect. Unique is well, the use for X-Men. I have done a lot of these interviews. I've been standing there talking to people. You think that this, this person could either say A, B, C, or D. She says X, Y, and Z. You know, she says something you just don't ever see. You skipped a whole bunch of letters. Alphabet, exactly. But I got you. That's I got what you. I'm talking about. Because you don't, you don't know what what's coming, and she, that's what she does. And her knowledge is second to none right now. So I'm excited to see both Emma, the Golden Mike, and Amazing Mara Kanopic. Jay, what are what is the tale of the tape? In the tale of the tape, we've got Mara Kanopic. Her strengths are awkward silences. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Neutrons. That's weird. Yeah. Sarcasm, and she even had another one. Never skipping leg day. I felt like that was a jab at me. I don't skip leg day. <laughs> I don't skip. I do well, leg day. And how about the Golden Mike. And then we got the Golden Mike Emma Fife. Her strengths are Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and getting on my last damn nerve. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. That is a good strength. All right, so how about if, you, if you're ready to go? I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. Three rounds in the inner geekdom division of the tournament. Introducing first, representing the Fight Club with a record of one win, two defeats in the Inner Geekdom division, ladies and gentlemen, the Golden Knight, Emma Fight! And out to the ring by Rachel the Crusher pushing. And she is the mother of dragons right now. She is. Rachel Cushing is here now with the mother of dragons herself, the Golden Mike. Yeah. And Emma, which is very interesting is that these two could compete. That's what I'm thinking. It, yeah. Doesn't if Emma wins this, wouldn't she have to face Rachel? She would probably face place. Play probably. <laughs> she would probably play Rachel, who obviously is coming off of that big win against Eric Zipper at the Collider Collision. All right, and her opponent. She is the Brown Dwarf Star with a record of one win and no defeats. 
Give it up for the amazing Mara Kanabe! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a whole damn minute. Do we, are we going to have to look at Zach, Zach Efron on the whole match? I believe so. Oh, dear Jesus. I like your uh, your mascot here, Mar. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like to parade around mostly naked men to even out the stakes. Yeah, I All like right. that. All right. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Round number one is going to work like this. The competitors are going to get 10 questions in the realm of inner geekdom. They will have 15 seconds to answer the questions. They'll write the answer on the whiteboard. They will show it to the camera and say it at the same time when it is their time to reveal the answer. Three JTE rules, one challenge. If you have any other questions that you don't understand the rules, please ask. And with that, Mara, are you ready? Always ready. Emma, are you ready? I echo Mara's sentiments completely. Then let's get ready to schmooda! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. First question is in the realm of Star Trek. Star Trek. What Beastie Boys song does the crew play to blow up the enemy ships in Star Trek Beyond? I use Beastie Boys to work out. You know what? Do you? Yeah, man. Either old school or? Old school. I got a mixture, a blend. You got to have that boat. Five, four. Can you please repeat the question? Yes. Oh. What Beastie Boys song does the crew play to blow up the enemy ships in Star Trek Beyond? Wow, using a JT rule early. If you have to. I mean, okay. This is Five, nice to see that. I mean, I guess. Four. Emma three, looks calm about this. Two. One. Pens down, please. Mara. I didn't have it. I'm not good with Beastie Boys. All right. This is a little bit of an on the nose guess. Intergalactic. Oh, incorrect. Looking <laughs> for sabotage. <laughs> sabotage. I had an S. Yeah, an S. <laughs> I was like, there's something with an S. All right. Next question, Jay. All right. Your second question comes from the category of Middle Earth. Middle Earth. A place that no one else should go. <laughs> In The Return of the King, what is the name of the steward of Gondor? Yeah, do you know the name of that? Without, without yeah, looking? Yeah, without looking. <sighs> Absolutely. Have you not watched Lord of the Rings? I don't remember shit. Five. <laughs> At least you honest four, with it. Three. Two. Please repeat the question. Second one. There you go, Joe. In, re in The Return of the King, what is the name the, st what is the, name, the steward of Gondor? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought it should have been. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Emma. Denethor. Correct. <laughs> Mara. Denethor. Got Correct. it. Tie game there. Okay. Woo! Next question here. Next See, qu she used it. She used it and she used it well. It worked. All right. Next question is in the MCU. The MCU. First seen in the Infinity War. What is the name of the member of the Black Order? who captures and tortures Doctor Strange. I swear Black Order sounds like a rap group from like 97. I bet you it is if you Google it. I, it probably is, y'all. I bet you they got like nine members though. They were right up under the Wu-Tang Clan. True, five. Because you know, they ain't nothing to mess with. Four. That's how it goes. Three, two, one. Mara. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. Ebony Ma. That's, That's correct. Right. Emma Five right. taking the lead here. Okay, right. two, one. Your next category is Harry Potter. In the Sorcerer's Stone, what did Ron Weasley's mother knit on his Christmas sweater? Would you have gotten that? Uh, hell no. I'm not going to even lie to you tell you I would have. <laughs> exactly. Uh, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Emma. The letter R. Correct. Correct. Mara. The letter R. Correct. Correct. Next question. Category of DC. DC movies. In... The Oscar-winning Catwoman. Don't you do that. I'm just kidding. Didn't win. <laughs> Don't you do that. Don't you lay the in, people. In Catwoman, what actor played the male love interest, Tom Lone, who shared a flirtation basketball scene with Halle Berry? I heard Rachel Cushing. Uh, <laughs> I know she was upset. I just heard Rachel Cushing curse us for saying Catwoman. Have you seen that movie? <laughs> yeah, it's horrendous. It is horrible. I don't even know why it was allowed to be made. Five. Yeah. Four. There's some things Halle Berry shouldn't Three, do. Three, two, one, and Mara. 
Benjamin Bratt. Correct. Emma. Uh, it, I wrote not worth remembering. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh. and, and Catwoman stinging the five She's club. Not wrong, once again. <laughs> so, cool. All right, so tie game now, 3-3, three, because three, Emma misses. Mara gets it, 3-3, three, three, as we get to question number six. Question number six in the category heroes and villains. I like to be a supervillain. In which film does Indiana Jones say, Nazis, I hate these guys? I know you've seen Indiana I Jones. I love it. Okay, I know you've seen that. Do you own like a whip and a, and a satchel? Um, no comment. Okay. Five, all right. All right. Four. Four self. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Pens down, Emma. Okay. And what do you got? Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Correct. Correct. Ah, I thought it was Raiders. Oh, okay. So Emma going back up here. Four, three. Ooh. Four, three. Next question. Uh, next question. The DCEU for question seven. What does Diana say a secretary is called where she comes from after hearing Etta Candy's description? You know, yeah. Diana scared me a lot, Wonder Woman. Like, she could just beat up everybody. Is it weird to say that that's what well, attracted she's, me to her? Yeah, no, not at all. Five, like, powerful woman attracted me to her. Four. Three. Arm. Two. One. Pens down, please, Mara. A pet? Incorrect. A slave? Servant. Yeah, I, I, it's it's probably probably not right. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Slavery. So slavery. Slavery. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll give it we to you. We call that slavery. We'll give, yeah. 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 give it to us. We'll give it to Emma. 5 3. Emma huh. goes up 5 to 3 now right. as we get to question number 8. Number 8 in the category of Star Wars. Yeah. No, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> During the attack on the blockade runner at the beginning of A New Hope, who died first when the stormtroopers were cutting through the door? A stormtrooper or a rebel soldier? 50-50 shot. Here. You get to flip a coin and just figure out what you're going to do. All right. Is this how you flip a coin? Do you do a two-hitted coin? Five. Just take a chance. Depends on my life. Four. All right. Then use a nickel. Three. Buffalo nickels. Two. Can you repeat the question? Yep. All right. During the attack on the blockade runner at the beginning of A New Hope, who died first when the stormtroopers were cutting through the door? A stormtrooper or a rebel soldier? Emma uses her... First one? You see, yeah, first one, but okay. you still had a 50-50 yeah. chance. So it's like you pick one, you'll get one right, you might get one four, wrong. Who three, knows? Two. Let's pray on it. One. Pens down and Emma. Am I going to regret changing my answer? I put a stormtrooper. That's that correct. correct. Yes. Stormtrooper. There you go. So we now have 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four is our next Emma's question. Emma's in the lead. Marvel. Marvel is the next question. In 2000's X-Men, what mutant is presenting in front of a congressional hearing about mutants at the beginning of the film? Oh, yeah, I like the first X-Men. Me too. Except for the dude who played Sabretooth. He just looked really weird. Yeah, he's you know, all right. Five. This was lame. Four. I liked him better than Leave Three. Yeah, I can agree with Two, that one. Two, one. Pens down, please. And Mara. Jean Grey. Correct. Emma. I put Professor Xavier. Incorrect. <laughs> so Mara to get, coming back here. Coming six, back. five. Good round here so uh -huh. far. Six, five. As we get to question number 10, Jay. Question number 10, mixed bag. This can come from anything, any category, <laughs> and a whole lot of movies. So put on your thinking caps. You dig what I'm saying? What song plays during the church fight scene in Kingsman, The Secret Service? I love this Do movie. Do love the first movie. I love this movie. This one does not exist. I'm trying to find a clothing shop that can hook me up like that, but they don't have nothing for these shoulders. No, five, yeah, shoulders are four, bad thing. three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down. And Miss Fife. It's a total guess. Bohemian Rhapsody. Incorrect, Correct. Mara. Flight of the Bumblebee. No, <laughs> it is. <laughs> but well, that that's would have been a great, great scene. That would be a great, great scene to murder. It's Freebird by Leonard Skinner. Uh, right. Freebird. Listen, that's I right. know it's something epic. All right, look, we'll talk about epic. That first round, 6 5. What a battle between both Emma Fife and Mara Kanopic. 6 5. First round, Emma is up by one. The wheel will now come around as we get to round number two. It will work like this. The competitors will spin the wheel. They get five questions in the realm of inner geekdom. Five questions worth two points apiece. If you go to multiple choice, it's worth one point. You can't steal from your opponent in this round. Mara has one JTE rule left. Emma has two. Both have their challenges mm. left. Emma, you are up 6-5. Would you like to go first or second? I will go second. You can go second. Mara, yeah. you're going to let Amazing Mara Kanopic spin. Here we go. Yeah. Give it a good spin, you please. You know what? This has been a nice match. Most nice people match. would have thought Kanopic would have been just overpowering Emma yeah. the way she had her first round. I but they've been not, pretty uh, even. I match. did not think that. I think well, Emma, I was hoping that. Emma's Don't really judge strong me. in that first round. I had prayers on this one. 
And it's coming back around. Where are we looking at? Oh, 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 oh. MCU. The MCU. The MCU. Yeah. She's going to stick keep with it. All right, I'll, I'll do the MCU. Okay. All right. All right, here we go, Mara. It's you got hard for short people to get in these chairs. <laughs> you got five questions. It's hard for everybody. I'm taller in the chair than Ginger. without the chair. Five questions in the realm of the MCU. Remember, you can go to multiple choice. Question number one. What is Bucky's first, middle, and last name? James Buchanan Barnes. For two that's points. <laughs> All right, that's correct. Okay. Question two. What occupation does Agent Coulson assume Thor has while interrogating him in New Mexico during 2011's Thor? That he is a doctor. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Uh, that he is a security guard. Incorrect. Mercenary. 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 Ah. Mercenary. Question number three. And Black Panther, who plays Ninjobu, Killmonger's father. Sterling K. Brown. Two points. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Question number four. In Captain America Civil War, what is the name of Sam Wilson's drone? Red Wing. Two points. Two points. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And your final question here. In Spider-Man Homecoming, the thug that was thrown off the ferry has a tattoo of what on his neck? I would like to go to multiple choice. Mm. Is it A, lizard, B, octopus, C, scorpion, D, lion? Scorpion? For one point. <laughs> All right. So Mara Kanopic is up now 12-6. It is now Emma Fife has a chance to spin and either tie it up or take the lead. Here's the spin this from is, Emma. This is a good battle going Great down right here in the part. second round. She's looking for Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings here, Jay. She wants to put her, her voodoo hexes that she did on me on you. Then, yeah. and on this wheel right now. Yep. So here we go. We're she looking. might get it the way it's spinning. Oh, oh she's got. Coming. It looks like the DCEU. Ugh. The DCEU. Oh. Got to spin again. Nobody oh. wants that. There we go. Woo! She's hoping it doesn't land on DCEU again. No, she's trying to go away from DCEU, and she's looking for Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, obviously. That's, that's and it's past Harry Potter. Will it come back around? Oh, oh, middle come, Earth. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, oh. Went away from mixed bag into Shoot. Marvel movies. So we get into Marvel movies now. Marvel mm -hmm. movies. Your first, category, first question in the category of Marvel movies, Emma. Mm -hmm. In X2, Mystique helps Magneto escape from prison by injecting what kind of metal into the security guard's blood? Adamantium. It's incorrect. Incorrect, Mara. Iron. For two uh, points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right, Emma. Your second question. In Blade Two, who plays Dieter Reinhardt, leader of the Blood Pack? Multiple choice. Is it A. Ron Perlman, B. Gerard Butler, C. Norman Reedus, or D. Viggo Mortensen? Ron Perlman. That's one, point. one point. Question three. Oh. Question number three. In X-Men First Class, what is Sebastian Shaw's yacht called? Multiple choice. Is it A, Albatross, <laughs> B, Red Tide, C, Sarkin, or D, Caspertina? B. It's incorrect. Read Mara? Those off. No, read those off to her first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it A, Albatross, B, Red Tide, C, Sarkin, or D, Caspertina? Red Tide? No, the answer is Caspertina. <laughs> See, wait, 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 wait. Here's one thing, though. I thought that Caspertina was the name of the submarine, not the yacht. Do you want to challenge you it? Want to challenge it? I'm guessing no, based on everyone else's response. Okay. <laughs> okay. All, right. Uh, All right. All right. So next question. <laughs> number four. Question number four. What does Blade call vampire wannabes? Oh, um. Oh. Five. Shoot. Multiple choice. Is it A, freshmen, B, meat bags, C, familiars, or D, vamp babies? A, freshmen. And correct, Mara. Yeah. Familiars. That's correct, correct for one point. All right, and question number five. In the Sam, Sam Raimi Spider-Man, what character became the Green Goblin? Oh, uh, um, Harry Osborn. It's incorrect. Mara. 
Norman Osborne. All right, yeah. so Mara Kanopic has gone up by 10 points <laughs> after that round. <laughs> it was close, and now Emma needs to hit all three of her questions in the third round, or this match will be over via TKO. Round number three works like this. The competitors are going to get three numbers between 1 and 16. First one is worth two points, second one is worth three, and the third one is worth five points. Mara has one JTE left. Emma has two of her JTE left. Both have their challenges left. Mara, you are in the lead here. Please choose three numbers between 1 and 16. 1, 8, and 16. 1, 8, and 16. Emma. Let's go 7, 4, and 12. 7, 4, and 12. Emma Fife has to hit all three of these in order to tie the game. If she misses one, then Mara Kanopic will advance to the next round. Here is the first question for Emma Fife. Category seven, Emma, you chose weapons, tech, vehicles, and magical objects. That's a thing? <laughs> Yo, since we're, I'm, I'm with Mara on this one. Okay. That's a thing? You made that up. <laughs> no, that's what we you have heard, right you here. Heard, you heard my math. You think I could have made that up? <laughs> what is the name of the sword that Bilbo gives to Frodo in the Fellowship of the Ring? Sting. Two points. <laughs> Two points. Two points. Two points. All right. All right, Emma. Question, no, you, you'll, you'll use Mara. All right. Gotcha. Question number two comes from category number four, Emma, and that is Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Three points. Which song is played when George and Lorraine first kiss in Back to the Future? Oh, oh my God. <sighs> Five, four, three, to? Can you repeat the question? I can. What's, which song is played when George and Lorraine first kiss in Back to the Future? I know it, but I cannot come up with it. Nothing? <laughs> no. That's and sorry. your winner <laughs> by way of technical oh, knockdown, the amazing Mara Kanabe. It was Earth Angel. Earth Angel. Earth Angel. Earth Angel. Kanopic advancing here after a very strong first round from both bidders. She just took off in that second round. Emma struggled in the second, and because of it, Mara Kanopic advances. And how about this? We have Mara Kanopic going into that third round. All right, so now we're going to talk to, yeah. I just want to make it very clear. There are no losers here. She gets to take Zach. Oh, very oh, nice. Man. <laughs> Mara Kanopic, <laughs> being that personality. I, I can't help but to <laughs> applaud that. That's nice. All right. So after that very nice, kind gesture, we are now going to talk to uh, Jen Sturt, who is with both Emma Fife and Mara Kanopic. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with the amazing Mara Kanopic. Mara, that was your second match, your second KO. You've got to be feeling pretty amazing right now. Uh... I'm feeling great. I'm a little tired. I was going to have an energy drink for lunch, but then I was like, liquid lunch, yes, no. So, you know, I'm good. So, you know, you were down the first round, and going into the second round, you spun uh, MCO. Was it? Wasn't it? Yes. Right. Yep. And you did pretty amazing. I really felt like you got, you kind of got your spirit back in the second round. What were you feeling? You know, it's kind of a crapshoot. You can get a question about something you've literally just looked at this morning, like sabotage. Because um, I literally just read that this morning. And, uh, you know, it can just not, not come up when you need it. So I just got lucky. Were you surprised in round one how Emma came out swinging? No, I was not surprised at all. If, uh, if she wasn't fierce, I wouldn't have been preparing to fight her. Yeah, and you know, you, so you faced Emma, you faced Koi. We really don't know who you're going to face next because, you know, this tournament has been so... <laughs> that was a great match. I just want to say, excuse me here. That was a great match. That was fantastic. You did great there. I just got to say, it is amazing, amazing that you're going to be facing Rachel Cushing in round three. I think that's amazing. I, oh, and remember what I said earlier? You keep winning, and I'll keep winning. We'll see what happens. Do you guys like have him on payroll? What's going on? I think he is payroll. Oh, Emma. That didn't go the way you thought it did. But but you did get Zach Efron. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that really truly uh, I am the winner here because look, I mean, have you seen these abs? <laughs> They're a little sweaty. <laughs> I mean, it's shiny, glossy, it just adds to the effect, you know. 
You had a fantastic round one, and then the wheel just did not go your way. You know, the wheel is part of the game, and it's one of those things where I I was very happy with my performance in round one. It turns out I actually did know the answer to the Catwoman question, but I just was so adamant about hating Catwoman that I gave up on answering. Uh, And, you know, uh, the last couple of times, I feel like it kind of goes every other for me. I get a a nice, strong category. I was this close to getting the Middle Earth category this time, but eh, you win some, you lose some. Anything you do differently? Would you stick with your first wheel choice? or Maybe. Uh, you know, the thing is with DCEU is there's not that many films, so they can go really deep. At the same time, I've been pretty outspoken about how I don't care for the X-Men films. So a lot of the questions were about those, and uh, I just kind of don't think about them very much. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I'm not sure if you saw, but we just found out that, Rachel, you're going to be playing Mara in the next round, which is kind of great because you have two knockouts, she has two knockouts, it's kind of the battle of the knockouts. How are you guys feeling about this as a Fife Club? I feel all right. Uh, I assume that means that Mike came through and did his corruption thing and made a decision. Seriously, is who, like, why, Mike, are you blackmailing somebody? I don't understand what's going on here. I think that's pretty obvious. I think he's trying to put us off our game, but look, I'm playing one match at a time, and if the next match is Mara, I'm ready for it. She is definitely a phenom. She's great for the league. I'm so excited to see more strong female players like us in here. but, you know, she's and like, like any other match, I'll be ready for her and I'll go on to the final. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the Fife Club still has a, still has a fight to fight here in the Intergeekdom Tournament. And, you know, uh, Mara is phenomenal, but Rachel's the original phenomenon in the Intergeekdom, in, in, in my opinion. And this is the thing is, again, Mara's really awesome we really like her and she gave me the Zac Efron so congrats to her it was a it was a it was a well-deserved victory on her part today but that being said I do think that Rachel can take her well there you have it Alex can we get him a towel or something this is really gross well look at that I mean are you surprised Mike Kalinowski steps (sighs) in and goes oh I'm looking forward to seeing you playing Rachel Cushing in the next round you know that's it we're gonna have the amazing Mara Kanopic against Rachel Cushing in round number three holy crap what a match that's 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 something we could potentially have on the upcoming live show yeah well look that's that's gonna be a big one right there yeah well what that means now is you're just gonna you're gonna see those two go at it, and then the winner will play um, in the finals. And then we get the champion, Jason Inman, will defend the championship against the winner of this entire oh, tournament. Yes. Man, so. I'm, I, can't, I can't wait for this, man. It's exciting. Again, to be out the first round, it sucks. Let's keep it real. It hurts my heart. But to see Mara go further and now watching her against yep. Rachel is going to be something for the ages. Mara Kanopic is a fast 2-0 and now, and she has two knockouts. 2-0, two, and o, two knockouts to to start that is a very very fast uh, path to success already and now she's going to have the biggest match of her career as Ooh. she goes up against Rachel Cushing that is going to be something the crusher now this is probably I would say so far it looks to be the crusher's toughest opponent that's what I was about tournament. to ask you who, who is the pressure on really in the next match is it Rachel or is it Mara that's Rachel's been on a roll Mara's coming in 2 and 0 oh. like who is it really on is it on Rachel is it on is it on Mara well the you know Mike Kanowski came in there first and and then Rachel had her words. Obviously, you knew Rachel was going to say nothing but nice things about Mara. That's what Rachel does. Rachel plays the game with respect. Rachel just wants to win that championship, but she also acknowledges how good and what Mara Kanopic has been doing so far. So to see these two going at it, because now the question is whether or not Mike Kalinowski is avoiding one of them, which is possible. That's potentially possible. Well, eventually he's got to play one of them. If he makes it to the final, he's got to, he's got to play one of them. So <laughs> it's, it was interesting, and I enjoyed calling the match. Thank you for joining Thank me Thank you today. for having me. I just really want to see Mike go down throughout all of this. I just want to see him go down Be in careful. all the flames. Get your pink slip. Yeah, sure. this is true, man. I, I need all my money. All right, anybody. Anyway, guys, so this uh, was a hell of a match. First, thank you to all of our patrons. If you didn't know, now we announced something really special. This is just for patrons. We're going to start doing exclusive matches. Don't worry, not league matches, just some fun exhibition matches. Some fun exhibition that you might see a, uh, I don't know, a new releases or a horror movie. I think we are, we're going to do a Fatal Five. There's all these things that could happen, but they're not league matches. They're just something to reward the patients for being involved. Thank you guys for being involved in the Patreon. It helps us go in every single week here. For Jay Washington, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time. Hmm, Kevington. Hey, Mara. 
Oh, hey Rachel, what's up? I just wanted to say congratulations on your match against Emma. That was awesome. I'm so excited that you're a part of the league. Uh, strong women geeks. I love that we're working together. Um, and I'm really excited to play you. I mean, I just think it's gonna be a ton of fun, but. Ladies! Uh, some of my two favorite competitors here. How are we doing? How's the league? Uh, Inner Geekdom's been going great, right? This tournament, fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic for everyone, the competitors, the fans. Rich, I just gotta say, watching you, from where we started to where we are now, you have grown tremendously as a competitor. Nothing but respect for you. Mara, you're the superstar now. You're, 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 the, golden, you're the golden goose. You're what are. The fans love you. We, we know what that's like to be the, the, you know, the favorites at one time, but I mean, you gotta say, you're taking this tournament by storm. And now, do you guys know? I mean, we're into the third round. Do you guys know who you're facing yet? Oh, wait a minute. I know. You guys are facing each other, aren't you? So, I mean, you got, you know, Lord of the Rings and Potter. You're, you're going out and you and Star Trek, Star Wars. And how do you, what are you guys' thoughts on the, on the tournament? How's it going to go? And you, how do you guys feel about it at this? A little disrespectful, don't you think? What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown breakdown. And in Mara Kanopic, sophomore showing, she starts off this first round with five points. That's a three point drop from her debut. Meanwhile, Emma Fife, she takes a one point lead by putting up six points of her own. Throughout the tournament so far, players are averaging six points in the first round. Into the second round, Mara goes with MCU and earns seven points. Now with Emma's turn, she lands on Marvel and gets just one question correct for one point, and Mara capitalizes on the misses by stealing a total of five points. And in the final round, Emma was unable to avoid the TKO, bowing out after her three-point question, and Mara goes on to the third round by a score of 17 to nine. Inside the numbers, Emma went eight of 18 for 44% correct. That's a 16% drop from her last match. Looking at Mara, she answered 68% on the day and is now 5 of 7 on steal attempts for a total of 7 points so far in this tournament. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.